So, a Spec Ops The Line is a video game developed by Jaeger Development in 2012, which was inspired by Joseph Conrad's novel, The Heart of Darkness. And I will be talking about how war and violence is portrayed in Spec Ops The Line, uh, in contrary to other video games which glorify these concepts. In this presentation, you can expect an introduction segment and four body paragraphs in which I will be talking about the narrative, setting, mechanics in Spec Ops The Line, and also war and violence within American culture and how it manifests in the video game, after which I will be moving on to my conclusion and parting thoughts. I am also hoping to share with you a clip from the video game, so we'll see if I have time for that. Uh, to begin, video game developers historically have romanticized and glorified the concepts of war and violence in the gaming industry, with games such as Call of Duty, Homefront, Battlefield, and Medal of Honor. Spec Ops The Line, developed by Jaeger Development, stands as a groundbreaking critique of this trend. Released in 2012, The Line is a third-person shooter game in which the player takes control of Delta Force team captain Martin Walker through his recon mission to survey the landscape of Dubai after a catastrophic event which has left the city uninhabitable. The aim of this article is to delve into the game's narrative, mechanics, and setting to explore how it challenges traditional notions of morality, heroism, war, and violence in digital games. This paper makes the argument that instead of glorifying these concepts like games previous, the line treads unbeaten ground in the genre by exploring the disturbing aspects of war and criticizing the justification of violence. The game accomplishes this through providing insight into the psyche of the Delta Force team captain, Martin Walker. Combining this with an intriguing narrative and gameplay elements, the line creates a microcosm of war, compelling the players to face the consequences of their choices. Another point of focus for this paper is the way in which the game invites discourse on the place of war and violence within American culture and literature. The argument that digital games are an evolving medium for exploring contemporary social and ethical issues with unique narratives will serve as the concluding point of my article. To begin with, war and violence in the narrative of the line. Among all the elements of the game, it is perhaps its narrative that distinguishes the game the most from other military games. The line presents players with a story that is not just about shooting enemies and getting from objective A to objective B. It serves as an introspective exploration of the concept and consequences of war and violence, both on individuals through the team captain Martin Walker and on his team members. To give a bit of the backstory of the game, two weeks before the events that take place in the game, the US military receives an enigmatic message from inside the stone wall of Dubai, a looped recording that stated, this is Colonel John Conrad, United States Army. Attempted evacuation of Dubai ended in complete failure. Death toll, too many. The US military sends in a three-man team consisting of Delta Force soldiers to carry out a mission to look for any survivors. The story begins with Captain Walker and his team walking on the outskirts of Dubai, ravaged by cataclysmic sandstorms and political upheaval. Della team's orders are to engage in reconnaissance for any potential survivors, but the mission quickly descends into chaos as they engage in combat with insurgents, deserted soldiers belonging to the 33rd Battalion, and fellow Americans. The choices the player must make in the game get increasingly difficult. The most prominent example of this is the gameplay segment where the player takes over the gate to set free the hostages there. Being outnumbered, Walker decides on using an abandoned mortar to fire white phosphorus at the soldier's camp, despite an objection from his team member, Staff Sergeant Lugo. This results in a catastrophe, however, as Walker learns that the enemy combatants there were in fact trying to help evacuate the civilians. The player is then shocked into this realization with Walker as Delta Team walk through the battlefield to the gate, observing the violent effects of white phosphorus. With the death of more than 45 civilians and 55 soldiers in his conscience, Walker breaks down in that moment and becomes delirious as the story progresses. He hallucinates Colonel John Conrad contacting his team through a broken radio, having to make a choice between two criminals which in reality are two dead bodies hanging, engaging in combat with reanimated bodies burned by white phosphorus or with his dead comrades. In the ending of the game, he is put against the hallucination of Conrad, who he blamed for the events that took place in Dubai. Walker, along with the player, comes to the realization that he was hallucinating his version of events and has to face this truth. The subversion of traditional hero tropes is one of the most compelling aspects of the line's narrative. Walker is not portrayed as a 
tropic hero, but as a flawed leader who was deeply conflicted about his choices, unlike the typical morally upright protagonists we find in military shooters. Walker has to battle his own demons along with the enemies. The complexity of his characterization adds a layer to the narrative and challenges players to question their traditional views of a soldier slash hero in the context of war. In these ways, the narrative is one of the aspects of the line which presents players with a gritty, unapologetic portrayal of the horrors of war and violence. If we turn to the slide, you can see here on the bottom right Walker's realization following his realize Walker's reaction, sorry, following his realization that Conrad is actually been dead for a long time and he has been hallucinating his version of events. I would like to take a moment here and change my screen share to the video clip I was going to show. It's only about a minute long. Most of it is blurred because of the gory aspects of it, but I want you to focus on the face of Walker and his team and the dialogue they have. You should be able to see my video right now. I am starting to play it. These are all the bodies of the dead civilians burned by white phosphorus that Walker used to take over the gate. And these are his two team members. In this clip, we see Walker's face become one of denial, one of regret, and towards the end, one of a man who is delirious and filled with resolve to end the supposed villain, Joseph Conrad, who he blames for the white phosphorus incident. And uh, before I move on, this is the slide. This is the painting that Joseph Conrad has in his office that depicts Walker's use of white phosphorus and the concurring results. The scene of the mother holding her baby in her hands is the most gritty aspects of this reality. Moving on to how war and violence is analyzed in the setting of the line, Jaeger development utilized the city of Dubai not only as a place for the events of the game to occur, but also as a character in the game. The catastrophic landscape of the city reminds the players of the possible results of outside intervention. The once glamorous city of Dubai now is a desolate battlefield, full of dangers at every turn. The player observes the human cost of conflict as they tread Dubai with Walker and his team. Car wrecks, collapsed buildings, and failing infrastructure are among the views the player encounters. Moreover, Dubai's status as a site of Western excess adds another layer of storytelling to the setting. As American soldiers fighting on a foreign soil, Delta Team faces both the consequences of their own actions and the actions of the U.S. military and intelligence have taken in Dubai. The contrast drawn between the past and the present of the city is a point to highlight how war and violence is represented in the game. The city is filled to the brim with details that foreshadow the game's events and Walker's psychosis, such as a stop sign right at the beginning of the game, signaling the player and Walker to not continue on their journey. Walker's hallucination of seeing objects and enemies that are not there in reality is another element that enriches the setting. The dynamic nature of the city supports this aspect. In the game, players can use the city's rubble and wreckage as tactical assets to use as they wish, and as they progress, they are constantly reminded of their effects on the hellscape of Dubai while doing so. Through these details, Dubai serves as a powerful symbol of how the line conceptualizes the consequences of war and violence. By transforming the city into a character of its own, the game creates a setting which encapsulates the horrors of war and violence. War and violence in the mechanics of the line are another aspect which reflect the vision of Jaeger development on, the concepts, on, the, on these concepts of war and violence. Throughout the game, the team members' physicality degrades as they bleed, 
get splattered with mud, dust, and more. As you see on the slide on the bottom right there, this is Walker before he enters Dubai, and this is Walker as he's moving towards the end of the game. He is filled with bullet holes, his jacket has been torn, his pants have been torn, and he is filled with blood and dust. The cover and shooting mechanics of the game become more violent with progress. Walker, as squad leader, has the option to select targets for his team to take down, and the voice lines while giving these orders become more vindictive and psychotic through the game. In the beginning, Walker's orders are very professional and soldier-like, ranging from priority target marked to target eliminated, while after the White Phosphorus incident, his voice lines become more violent and desperate, such as kill is effing confirmed and rotten hell. This evolution in gameplay mechanics is not just a superficial change, but a commentary that provides discourse on the psychological toll of war on soldiers. The physical and mental deterioration of Walker and his team are reflected in their brutal behavior. This behavior emphasizes the dehumanizing effect of prolonged exposure to violence and combat. The game immerses the player in ethical problems faced by soldiers in real-life combat situations, contrary to other games. For example, the white phosphorus scene and the aftermath present themselves in a way that is meant to evoke a strong emotional response. The sight of charred bodies and the screams of burning victims elicit a sense of horror and regret in the player and invites these players to contemplate their actions. The cover-based shooting mechanic of the game, as you can see on the bottom left, is among the mechanics that evolve with playtime. For instance, in the beginning of the game, firefights are structured and tactical, but as the player nears the end, the combat becomes chaotic, intense, and delirious. This shift in mechanics mirrors Walker's descent into madness. While the game does not employ a morality mechanic like Red Dead Redemption 2, for example, there are key decisions such as whether to shoot unarmed civilians that lynched Walker's squadmate Lugo, which reflect the reality that in war there are no right answers, there are only shades of grey. The change in Walker's ability to take down enemies with melee is another way the game conveys its message about war. Early on in the playthrough, melee takedowns are swift and merciful, but towards the end they become more violent and personal. Jaeger Development's design of gameplay mechanics adds to the visceral experience of the game. War and violence within American culture in the line. Spec Ops The Line is not only a critique of the gaming industry on how it conceptualizes war and violence, but also a reflection on their place within American culture. With subversions of the heroic soldier archetype, the game presents a nuanced exploration of how American society observes war. The game also challenges American exceptionalism, the belief that the United States has a unique mission to spread democracy and freedom around the world. Conrad's desertion to help Dubai and the catastrophic results, followed by Walker's mission and its consequences, are a warning against the dangers of an interventionist policy. The game urges the player to question such acts, with unintended consequences of military actions being among the central themes. The line also touches on the role of propaganda within American context with the character Radio Man, who uses a broadcast to influence both the player and the opposing forces. Jaeger development criticizes the role of media in glorifying war and desensitizing the public through this character. Before I move on to my conclusion, I want you to look at this image, which is filled to the brim with quotes that the game presents to the player in the loading screens of the game. I know it's a lot to read, but you can focus on certain parts of it. Like on the bottom, it's still, it says, do you feel like a hero yet? On the left, it says, this is all your fault. There is no difference between what is right and what is necessary. And these quotes are directly attributed to the player through a meta narrative and also to Walker and what they're doing in Dubai. In conclusion, it is clear that Spec Ops The Line by Jaeger Development serves as a needed critique of the way war and violence are often portrayed in the video game industry. With dynamic gameplay mechanics, an intriguing narrative, and immersive setting, The Line is a testament to the power of video games as a medium for humans to express themselves. The game also provides insight on the concepts of war and violence in the context of American culture. The Lion's achievements call for further study and analysis on video games and the place they have in the area of cultural exploration.